What you're about to see is part of one of my lectures to our master's students in actuarial science at Heritage Watt University. Uh, these are very able students from all parts of the world uh, here to uh, study for their master's degree and to uh, get exemptions from some of the professional actuarial examinations. Uh, the subject of today's lecture is risk theory, uh, in particular no claims discount systems in motor insurance. Now, motor insurers will use many rating factors to uh, assess the correct premium for a potential policyholder. Although, uh, from the end of next year, following a recent judgment by the European Court of Justice, they will not be able to use gender. But even after taking account of all these rating factors, uh, it is still uh, not possible to easily determine the driving ability of the policyholder. So the insurers try to build this into their rating structure through the no claims discount system. Put simply, if you make claims, your premium goes up. If you don't make claims, your premium goes down. And what we'll be doing in this lecture is assessing through an example whether a typical no claims discount system operated by a UK insurer actually discriminates between, fairly between uh, those policyholders who are good drivers, likely to make less claims, and those who are not so good drivers and likely to make more claims. Right, morning everybody. Morning. morning. Okay, some news to start with. Um, this email was sent out uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, so by popular demand, the Thursday 5.15 lectures moved to Thursday at 2.15 in LT3. Okay, from this week. I hope that uh, doesn't inconvenience anybody. Good, okay. Um, so you'll have an email about that uh, in your inbox. Uh, can I remind you um, that we have a, a two-hour information session in EM183 following this. Talks from welfare, student support, careers, uh, library, I forget where else. So uh, please come along to EM183. Um, when we've finished. Right, now, uh, we're talking about no claims discount systems, and I did an example at the end of yesterday's session um, where uh, um, we were discussing whether the system that we were looking at discriminated properly between good drivers like me and bad drivers like other motorists. And the answer was that it didn't. Uh, but the uh, a key point was that the system we were looking at just had three levels uh, and wasn't a very realistic system. Um, we're going to start today by looking at uh, another example, example three, uh, which essentially does the same sort of thing, uh, but does it in more detail and in a much more realistic setting. Okay, so we've got a uh, number of claims uh, from motor policies each year, has a Poisson distribution with some parameter lambda. Uh, we're going to look at the typical UK system as defined by Jean Le Maire, not with protected no claims discount. Um, we're going to work out the uh, stationary distribution for six values of lambda. Um, and then in part B, we're going to look at this uh, idea of how well the system discriminates between uh, good drivers. Uh, I guess lambda is 0.05, would be a good driver on this scale and the bad drivers, uh, where lambda is 0.3. Okay, so the same idea as the last example, but now uh, in relation to a much more realistic system. Okay, so the first thing to do is to work out the stationary distribution for each of these values of lambda. So there's a spreadsheet that goes with this uh, example, you'll see that on vision. What I've done in the spreadsheet, and you can check this by looking at it on vision, is um, for each value of lambda, um, um, calculated the stationary distribution um, as uh, what I call pi 30. So I've done 30 iterations uh, of the system starting from uh, the initial distribution, pi zero, which was uh, one, 
uh, and then six zeros. So what I've done uh, is put in the initial distribution with everybody in the um, lowest premium category. Um, so they're all in level one to start with. I've then worked out the expected proportion um, at each stage for 30 years. And we saw in our um, uh, examples earlier that uh, after 30 years, things are pretty much into the stationary distribution. Um, now, I could have done this differently. I could have said, OK, we've got a seven-state system. So I've actually got eight equations, seven unknowns for my stationary distribution. And I could say, well, one of the equations is redundant, throw that away, then just solve a seven by seven system. And we could do that using uh, uh, some mathematical package. Doing it by hand would be um, uh, a little bit tedious. Uh, but I've wanted to do it uh, by looking at the, uh, uh, the iterations, because I know that that's going to give me a pretty accurate result. And actually, it's easier. So these are the stationary distributions for the different values of lambda here. Uh, if you go to the spreadsheet, it will have the full calculations. What I've done is just work out the stationary distributions. So these are the different uh, NCD levels. Here are the six different values of my Poisson parameter, uh, from wherever it is, 0.05 down to uh, these maniacs with 0.3. Um, we can see that if lambda is 0.05, then in a stationary state, 85, uh, over 85% uh, of the policyholders are expected to be at the lowest level. And uh, almost none of them are at the highest NCD level. As lambda increases, uh, then the proportion at the uh, highest level of discount goes down to about 30% for 0.3, and we're getting five, nearly five and a half percent at the highest level, um, as we would expect. Okay, so these are the stationary distributions, the calculations you need to look at uh, uh, on my spreadsheet. So that's part A. Um, what I want to do then is to say, well, what is the expected premium income for the different values of lambda once the system has reached stationarity? Um, and in particular, I'm going to look at the proportion uh, of that expected premium income as a, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the expected premium income for lambda is 0.3. That's exactly what I was doing in the example yesterday. Right, so the expected premium income um, is equal to um, well, let's call it P for the full premium. Uh, I don't care what P is, that's going to cancel when I do the uh, proportions. And it's going to be 0.33 uh, pi 1, 30, uh, plus 0.4 pi 2, 30, uh, plus 0.45 pi 3, 30, Oh, plus 0.55 pi 4.30 plus 0.6 pi 5.30 plus 0.75 pi 6.30 plus pi 7.30. So you need to remember for the... Um, typical UK system that at the highest level of discount uh, the policyholders will pay just 33% of the full premium at the next highest level they're paying 40% and so on um, people who are uh, at the top end will pay a full premium so we have 1 times P for these people the 30 is there just to remind you that I'm not actually using the real stationary distribution I'm using the 30th iteration um, uh, of my system uh, as an approximation for that. So that's, the, that's how I'm going to work out the expected premium income. And then the required proportion is going to be the expected premium income uh, for whatever value of lambda I'm looking at uh, divided by the expected premium income uh, for 0 0.3.
of lambda equals 0 0.3, and the premium P will, will cancel from the top and bottom there. Okay, I can't quite get it all on at once. Um, but what I've done down here uh, is for each of the values of lambda, um, worked out the uh, income, or what, what it says is income, this is the expected premium income for the value of lambda. Um, that's as a multiple uh, of the basic premium P. Um, so you need to uh, check the calculations here. If you take lambda as 0.3, you take this number times 0.33, this one times 0.4 and so on, plus this one. Uh, if I've done it correctly, uh, you should get 0.51. Okay, so there are my results. Uh, so I've done the calculations, um, we finished the example, but what can we say about this example? What's it telling us? Uh, well, uh, let's note the following. Um, and I would start off by saying we have the same feature um, as in example two. Example two was yesterday's example, and I asked the question there, does the system look fair? And the answer uh, from me was no, it doesn't look fair. Some of you agree with that. Uh, not everybody I remember. But, mm. uh, we have the same feature here. We should <coughs> have um, that the expected premium income for a given value of lambda, divided by the expected premium income uh, for 0 0.3 should be equal to lambda over 0 0.3. Uh, 